What's good y'all, John D. Saunders here. You know the vibes. In today's video, I'm talking about three criteria we look for any Webflow developers that we hire. Let's dive in. Webflow explodes with designers, developers, and just people as a part of the ecosystem. We put together a three-step breakdown of the criteria we look for when we're hiring a Webflow developer. Now, let me make this full page so y'all can see this in its full splendor here, y'all. What we do is we break this into three parts. One, they have to use some type of methodology in creating websites. So when we're hiring a Webflow developer, we usually ask for some read-only links of their website. Read-only links gives us an idea of what and how they built the website on the back end. What are their naming conventions like? How are they building out their assets? And we can see if they're creating clean websites that are going to be awesome and conducive to SEO and indexing on Google. So we like to do all of our websites using the client first methodology. Essentially, it's a set of guidelines and strategies to help us build Webflow websites. It's built and managed by FinSuite. They're amazing at what they do, but ultimately this helps us build out these sites pretty well. Now, we also look at the accessibility requirements. Webflow has actually created a checklist that we like to use to get that done. So if you look at their accessibility checklist, you can scroll down these items. Most of these out of the gate with Webflow are completed, but there are some things that you wanna check out and make sure that you're including in your website design and development. So things like don't disable Zoom, hide decorative elements with an area attribute, include a skip to main link, provide unique titles. So you wanna try and include as many of these as possible in your design, find and fix empty links and so forth. And you can use this checklist to kind of go through their accessibility and make sure that any of your developers do this as well when you're working with them on projects. Lastly, the last thing we look for is a Google Lighthouse score. So if they're sending us test projects, we want to make sure that these projects have at least an 80 or 75 and above. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. But in regards to this Google Lighthouse overview, you want to make sure that their scores are pretty high on all four, at least an 80 above in performance, accessibility, best practices, and SEO. You can do this by checking out the Google Lighthouse overview or downloading the extension and checking the websites out there. These three criteria are what we look for for any developer that we're working with. Again, it's the Google Lighthouse, Webflow accessibility, and then being able to use some type of methodology that they use throughout their websites. So that's my quick list. I'll send you all the Notion link to our doc so you can check it out. Feel free to share this with potential Webflow developers you're looking to hire in the future. And I hope this helped you out, y'all. If you have questions, comments, drop them below. If you love the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you enjoy my content, make sure you subscribe. Peace, y'all.